All right. So the learning goals for the chapter, I always put them towards AP success, not necessarily the course or the book. So I take every um, section we're doing, and if there's something you need to know about it for the AP exam, I parcel out what you need to know, and then I put a problem on the past AP exams right in here. All right, so that's kind of what's going to go on. And what you did yesterday, there is a part of it that you need to know for AP purposes, but it's a very small part. All from 2.1 you need to do is kind of understand that tangent line problem so you can recognize the formal definition. It doesn't say to use it. So you won't have to use the formal definition of the derivative. You're just going to have to recognize it. Yesterday I used it. I went from the beginning to the end. I got an answer. I'll show you what College Board requires you to know how to do with it. It says on here that this is the formal definition of the derivative. So that because you're going to have the informal ways which you're going to use constantly throughout the course and you'll never actually use the long way again because they're shorter ways so they just want you to recognize this that it's a limit as f h approaches zero remember from yesterday the first part of this is f of x plus h and that was from yesterday and then we subtract f of x and we put it all over h. And all this question is saying is, what's the original function? And you can find it right off the model. It's everything up here that doesn't have the h in it. That's the f of x. It's this right here is the function you're working with. That's really easy, right? If you understand the model I gave you yesterday, that's what they're testing. Do you know what this is? Oh, it's the formal definition of the derivative. They're even telling you. They just want you to know the format but you don't have to take it all the way on out like we did yesterday where we would foil this part and then we distribute this in and we'd get rid of all the terms that didn't have what's in them. H is, yep, and then we cancel what in the end? What did we end up canceling when we were all done? H, you know, that whole process, you really don't need to apply to the AP test. The only place you're going to apply it is for one homework assignment and possibly the extra credit option. I won't even on your test make you take it all the way on out because you're going to be able to do it quicker. Was this a class yesterday that had two of my Calc 2 people in that just whipped it off? You're going to be able to do that next week, so what will be the point? So you just need to recognize it. So that's first stop for today. Um, next step, what I want you to do is uh, open your books. We're going to do a few of the homework questions. I'm not giving you anything new today. Uh, I just yesterday did not give you a whole lot of time to work, if any. And I did talk about the graphs much. We did all the analytic or all the algebra. So on here from yesterday, at the bottom of the page, it said, so this was yesterday when we took the whole, I still have yesterday's notes lot from you guys yesterday. Um, we did this whole thing. And you're going to do that on your homework. But this is what I want you to write down. So we're going to open your books to page 104. The assignment, 2.1, is going to be 1 through 23 odd, and then 39 to 42, and 65. And these are, this is up here from last time, these are what I'm going to do with you right now. So your task is going to be to do 1 through 23 odd. You'll get some of that done in class today. I'm going to tell you, though, did I tell you yesterday when 2.1 is due? I, I get all the classes mixed together. Wednesday. Yeah, so I'm going to add some more book work to it on Monday. There'll be a worksheet on Tuesday, but all of 2.1 in its entirety is due Wednesday. Remember, there's some extra credit for that. Where is that located? Schoology. Yeah, you'll go right to the link. It's pretty, some people have already turned it in from the morning classes. They actually said it was really helpful. So although it, the reason I make a bonus is I told you really are going to have a shorter way. So I don't need you to do a zillion the long way, just a couple. So we're going to go take care, have your book open to page 104. I have it screenshot in here on the next page, and we're just going to go take a look. So 39 through 42, it's giving you the graph of f. So all these functions are y equals f of x for all of these, and it's a matching game. You're going to match the function with the graph of its derivative. So this is a graphical approach to calculus. Uh, Again, there's always there's algebra approaches, there's numerical approaches where you're a creeper, there's graphical stuff. This is the graphical. So really, down below, 
where it has all the ones you're supposed to match it with. And again, you can look at this in your book. I just screenshot it out. These are all the graphs of the derivatives. So the y values are representing the derivative. What did I tell you a derivative was yesterday? Slope of a what? Tangent line. Exactly. So the y values are representing the slopes on the other graphs. So have that in mind. I'm going to go back up and look at number 39, and I'm going to be looking at slopes and figuring out which graph it looks like. So the derivative would be to take a point of tangency, draw the tangent line, and plot the slope of the tangent line. Okay? Anywhere. If I were to go to 1 and draw the tangent line, I'd do the slope of the tangent line. So for a linear function, the slope of the tangent line is actually the slope of the line because they coincide. So what is the slope of this line at 1? 1. What's the slope of this line at 2? 1. Yeah. What's the slope of this line down at negative 3? 1. What's the slope everywhere? 1. So the derivative graph will be the function y equals f prime of x, which in this case everywhere is 1. So which graph goes with it? I can't see which one it is. Can you guys tell me down there which one looks like it would go with y equals 1? B. Are we all in agreement? Is there a horizontal line through 1? I don't want to scroll because it's touchy when I have my screencast on. All right, so that one goes with B. Now, just having an idea about domains, you don't really even need to know. If you have a deeper knowledge of math and you look at this function, you go, you know what? The domain of this function is all real numbers, right? What's the only graph left down there to match it to that covers the, spans all real numbers? I'm not looking, but there's got to be one down there that's the only one, I think, that spans the entire number line. What one is it? Is it D? Okay, now I don't, that, that's actually valid. That means you totally understand math. You're like, I'm not going to choose the other ones. Their domains are cut off. However, let me show you why it ended up being a line, right? And I'm not looking down below, but here's how I know it was a line that came from down here and then went up, right? Here's why. It's graphing the slopes. The slope right here, although I don't know what it is, I know it's very negative, correct? So when I'm plotting the slope right there, it'll be, remember y values, are, it'll be very negative. And right here, it'll be negative but less so. And right here, it'll be negative but less so. Right here, the slope is zero of the tangent line, correct? And now they start to be positive, and over here it's super steep. So when I'm plotting the slopes, it ends up being that straight line. All right? Next one, number 41. Again, I'm looking at the slopes of the tangent line. Just a domain analysis helps me, because it's got to be the one that only has a domain in the first quadrant. Which is the one that does that? Which one is it? A, but here's why it's looking as it's looking. So yes, 41 is A, but let's talk about it outside of the domain and look at slopes. If I were to go as close to zero as I can right here and draw the tangent line, is that positive or negative? Slope. Positive. And if I were even closer, it'd be even more positive, correct? So as I get really close to zero, the slopes are very positive. So when I plot them, they come in from way up there. And then they're still positive and still positive, and they approach zero. Because although that you see how that that slope is kind of flattening out, so that's why the graph starts way up and then it approaches zero for that one. See what I mean? You're looking at slopes of tangent lines. So for number 42, what's the slope of the tangent line right here? What's the slope of that? Negative one, exactly. Right here. It's also negative 1. This, this line, the slope everywhere, is negative 1. So I'm looking at a derivative graph where y is equal to negative 1 over there. But on the other side is 0. It's not negative 1 anymore. What's the slope over here? Positive 1. So I'm looking for the graph that goes negative 1 in this direction and positive 1 in that direction. What's the only one left? Okay, C. So I'm done. All right, the next one up, just for calculator use, I chose number 65. I will do for you, just in case you were gone yesterday. Um, I need some help with the calculator. So take your calculators out. We're going to kind of do a group effort here for the calculator. I'm going to bring mine up. Uh, and then your task will be 1 through 23 odd. Hopefully maybe over the weekend, but technically I'm not collecting it till Wednesday. Um, I'm going to bring up the calculator. I'm talking loud because I'm not sure that my headset's working. So I'm thinking it's picking my voice up off the computer, so that's why I'm yelling at you. Right? <laughs> I'm scary. Sorry. All right, here we go. 
So what I want you to do is what it says. It said to go graph that function. It was a function y equals, it was one half, it was x to the second. I've done this so many times today, I have the problems memorized. We're going to go hit the graph button. You should know what that's going to make. It's going to make a squash down fat parabola because the one half puts it at half of its normal height. And so there's the function. Go sketch that on your paper. 1A just said to, or 65A just said, sketch the graph. So go ahead and sketch that. Then it said to estimate, but I taught you yesterday how to use your calculator to exactly do the derivative. So we're going to go do that. It said to do the derivative at zero. <coughs> Can you tell me, Madison, does it say f prime of zero and then a half? Is that what's next in the directions? F prime of yeah, a half, and then where does it have you go from there? Then negative one. One, I think we'll do those three. I, I'm going to do it out of order. I don't have the book on me, but we're going to do, I think that is a, this will cover part A and part B, I think, if we just put it all on a table. Yeah. So we're going to do it by row, because I do have at least one person in every row here. I taught you yesterday, it says to estimate. Well, actually, at zero, I don't need a calculator at all to get that exactly. What's the slope of the tangent line at x equals zero? Look at it. Zero. So I don't need to calculate that or even an estimate. Add a half, take a look at the slope of this tangent line. If you had to estimate it, what does the slope of this tangent line look like at x equals a half? Looks like it's about half-ish. Let's go verify on the calculator, just to review that from yesterday in case anyone was gone. What calculator option do I hit? <coughs> I do, oh, I could do that. I want to do it the other way, though. Do you remember what, where it's located in here, my numerical derivative? Math, yeah, thank you. Math 8. Let's go do that. And this was from last hour. I'm going to redo that entry. I'm going to do the derivative with respect to x. I entered the function. And then let's do that at a half. We estimated a half, and we're probably right. Uh, I'm going to use 0.5 just for ease. And it says, yep, it is a half. So let's go throw that on here. Now, if I had to, go test one more. Go do it at negative 2. So you guys go math later. <coughs> and enter a negative 2 right here for me and tell me what you get. I'll wait a minute. Are you getting negative 2? Can someone back that? You're all getting it? Okay, perfect. So what's your guess for this one? Let's just go. <laughs> what do you think this one's going to be? Negative 1, yep, and negative a half. It appears like the derivative is y equals x. Would you agree with me? Looks very much like I'm getting that x value right back at me. So let's go back and finish off number 65. We did this. We did this. We are going to sketch a possible graph of f prime. So back to your graph that you made for part A. You had the parabola. We just guesstimated that it looks like the derivative is where the y, or y prime we call it, equals the x value. Do you guys remember from Algebra 2, what does the line y equals x look like? Do you remember, Mary? y equals x. Yeah, it is. It's the one that's, at, you know, it's where 1, 1, 2, 2, 3. It's like that 45 degree cut right out through here. This is the derivative. Okay, now notice it jives with what I told you. The tangent lines are negative here, which is why we're coming from below the x-axis. The tangent line is 0 right here, which is why I hit the origin. See how that jives? Now it says part D. We're going to use the definition of the derivative to find it. We already know what it is. We already know that the derivative is where f prime of x actually just equals x. I already know that because I did it graphically. But just to review yesterday's process, we'll go do it by hand, and then I'll be done. So right below there, let's write the function and see if we can remember yesterday's process. All right. So using the definition of the derivative, next week we're going to do this, and you're just going to say what the answer is. But for now, we're going to say f prime of x. See if you remember the model on your own. See if you can write it down. What's the first thing you write for the definition of the derivative? Not yet. A limit. Yeah, it's a limit process. We demonstrated that yesterday. As what's approaching what? Yeah, awesome. As h approaches 0. Maybe you remember. It's not a memorization thing. It's kind of thinking it through. It would squeeze that thing close to 0. What did I have on the top of this? Quotient. 
Mm -hmm. Excellent. F of X plus H. If you're listening to the video, you can't hear them, but they actually are talking. I think you can't. It doesn't pick up your voices, so it sounds like I'm just talking to myself and no one's answering. Anyway, and I subtract off what? F of X, thank you. What's it all over? Perfect. Now you go do it and you remember what's going to happen, and then we'll maybe go do one of the homework ones together too, just because we have a half hour, I think. Um, we'll go do one of them. So I go take X plus H and I stuff it in. And I'm going to go all algebraic here. It's going to be one half of x plus h quantity squared, done, minus f of x, which is the function itself, so minus a half x squared, all over h. And yesterday I gave you some little um, ways to know if you're doing it right. I said all what will wipe themselves out. All terms that not, yeah, you absolutely see. I said all non-H terms will disappear. Then everything left will have an H in it. And what did we do with the H? We, yeah, we factored and canceled, and then we worked our way on through it. So somehow I need to get all non-H terms. For this one, that's just going to require some foiling. Sometimes it requires some complex fraction cleanup. There's one in your homework where it requires conjugates. What do you think is going to be what you see when you decide to use conjugates? What did we see on our test when we went to conjugates? Square roots. So we'll talk about that one later. Anyway, I'm going to go do this one. I, all I need to do is foil that out, and I can already see how the half x squared is going to go, but we'll do it all by hand here. I'm going to foil x plus h, which would be first. Outside and inside are both x, h, so I'll have two of them, and my lasts are h squared. And then I still have the minus half x squared from above when it's all over h. Now, if I'm doing this correctly, all non-h terms will go. Well, that's going to give me a half x squared, which is going to wipe this out. So I'm just going to cross it out right now. The first dump wipes those out. The second dump in is going to give me one half of two xh. So all that's going to give me is an xh. The third distribution is going to give me one half h squared. So notice all non-h terms are gone. That will happen on your homework, all right? And then I'm going to factor out the H in Peyton said. We'll go take care of that. We're going to take the H out. It's going to leave us an X inside and a half H. Catch me if I make any silly mistakes, but I think I'm pretty good. Oops, I like that H. Looks like the natural log function. That's not what it is. Right there. Now what do I do? Cancel, Erica. Once I cancel, what do I do? Plug it in, okay? Plug zero in for what? H. When I do, this whole thing's going to zero. What is the only thing left inside of that limit? X. I knew it was that, because we just did it. You know, our, we, we ended, you guys all took the derivatives and it was equal to the X value. So F prime of X, the Y values of the derivative, is equal to X. I just verified it algebraically. All right, we're going to do one more in your homework for you, and then you can decide if you want to work or just chill out. I choose <coughs> I choose 17. No, I don't. I don't want it. I'm going to choose 7. All right, it's for a reason. So, first of all, number 7. I want you to go answer the question on your calculator, because that's a good skill. It says to find the derivative of g of x equals, is it x squared minus 9 or x squared plus 9? Oh, perfect. And it says to find it at a certain point. Can you tell me what the point is? I'm not looking at the book. Thank you, dear. All right. I want you to go do that using your math H option. Let's get the answer before we do all the work. Totally legal when you have a calculator. You're going to have to show me the work, but let's go see what we're supposed to get. So use your math 8. Derivative with respect to x of x squared minus 9 at 2. It's a function of the x value only. They didn't even have to tell me the negative 5. Uh, what did it say that g prime, which you just found of 2, is? What am I supposed to get? 4? Are we all in agreement? Okay, there it is. Now let's crank her out by here. So do you think the intent on the homework is for you to go do all of them on your calculator? Don't do any of them. All right? I want you to... Do it by hand. Here we go. We are going to find g prime of x, which will be the limit. I suppose you could write g prime. You should have it memorized as h approaches 0. 
f of x plus h, and I write it every time because I think it gets it into your head. Because I told you, for College Board, all you have to do is recognize the model. So if I can get that model drilled into your head, you'll really never have to use it. <coughs> Erica, <coughs> who's got cough due to cold, she's dying over here. All right, um, let's go do this. You made me lose my train of thought. Just kidding. You can go get a drink of water if you want. If you're listening to this, I'm talking to somebody who's coughing. All right. They can't hear the cough, so just sounds like you're being weirdo. All right, so let's go do f of x plus h. Stuff it in. And again, we're squaring it. Hey, do any of them make you go to the third power, to the fourth power, or anything beyond squaring? <coughs> Can you guys look? Any of them go to a third, fourth, fifth, or is it just something squared? Yeah, one goes to the third. One goes to the third. So you're going to have to know how to cube x plus h. How are you going to figure that out? Yeah, and I did it in the notes yesterday. So just go look there. We cubed it. So let's go work this out. We're going to have x plus h quantity squared minus 9. That's f of x plus h minus the function itself. Sometimes for multiple choice, this is how they'll show it to you. And they'll say, what was the function? Right? All right. Now I'm going to expand it out. Another foiling one. All non-H terms shall disappear. Take a limit. H approaches zero. Foiling yields. Same thing it has every time this week. So I'm going to write it really fast. There's my foiling. I have the minus 9. I'm subtracting an X squared. I'm adding a 9. And it's all over. Okay. Shut. Now. Here's my kicker. Here's how I know if I did it right. Ready? Find your non-H terms. X squared, what do you notice? <coughs> there it is. It's gone. H in it, H in it stays. Gone, gone. Now I factor the H out. So we're going to have H times 2X plus H. All over H. Still my limit. Get sick of writing limit. <coughs> I'm going to cancel. All right, last step, and then you're on your own. Now what am I going to do? Plug zero in for what? H. It's going to make that disappear, so I'm just going to go like that. I don't want to rewrite it. What's the only thing left in the quotient? Yep, 2x, which is my derivative. Now it said to find the derivative at the point 2, comma 5. The 2 doesn't matter because this is a function of the x-coordinate only. So what's my answer? I already know, we did it on the calculator, but uh, g prime of 2 is going to be just 4. Yeah, twice x. And that's what we got on our calculators, right? All right, so we are done. So what's your task? 1 through 23 odd, because I and you can skip 7 because I just did it. Um, I am going to tell you there are two that get a little nasty with the algebra, and I will video them for you so I don't answer the same question a zillion times on Monday. I will video those two sometime Right tomorrow at home. So if you're stuck, what if you get stuck on a different one, like number 15? Where should you go? Calc yeah, go calc chat. Don't go to the back of your book. It'll just give you an answer. You'll have no clue where it came from. Calc chat does a really good job. They show all the steps. The only difference is you gotta be careful. Remember, I told you that we're using h approaches zero and we're putting an h down here. What else did I say we could be using? The delta x. So I think calc chat on some of them, it'll use the delta x instead of an h. Just the, their delta x is your what? h. It's just easier to write. So, and it depends on what textbook you use. All right, we are done. Go ahead and have.